What's happening, y'all? It's that time. Uh, what I want to do first is uh, talk to you about my current jig box. I know you guys have seen this plenty of times in my uh, videos. But what I'm going to do is uh, discuss how I got my jig set up and a couple changes that I'm going to try to make. So in the bottom of the box, I have uh, four rows of styrofoam. I'm going to try to keep that, the four rows of uh, in the bottom. But what I'm going to do, I have I put all of my heavier jigs down here. My one eighths, quarters, uh, any of the bigger jigs I put on the bottom. And I use uh, just use my sixteenths. As of right now, just use sixteenths up on the top. And the reason why I do that is so that it don't weigh the styrofoam down so bad. Uh, and the 16th has been holding up very well. But the change that I'm going to make, I'm going to keep the four rows down at the bottom. But I'm gonna, I got a row of uh, 30 seconds and 64 down here that I'm going to move up top. Uh, and I, I, I think I can configure it to where it's, it, I have four rows at the bottom and four rows at the top instead of four at the bottom and three at the top. Uh, and that's the change. It's one of the changes that I want to make. I have four rows down here for one eighths and quarters and I need the extra room. I know you always see the plastic bags laying down here and those are usually uh, one eighth ounce jigs but I will be having I'll, I'll have four four rows down here for my one eighths and quarters and going four rows up here three for the one sixteenths and one for the thirty seconds and one sixty fourths. First things first there's going to be a couple things that we got to do I'll only do be able to do so much today because I'll have to cut my styrofoam and there's a trick to uh, the styrofoam that I learned the hard way and uh, we'll discuss that here in a little bit but we're going to get the measurements and uh, get the styrofoam cut right now and I know some of you guys I'm, and let me say this first of all there there are millions of ways to make a jig box okay this is my way of doing it it's the best that I've had so that's the reason why I say this is the best that jig box that I have used and it's gonna save you some money from the prices of some of the jig boxes they don't ha hold half the amount of jigs that I got it in this box and uh, you'll be pay paying a lot more money uh, same as with this uh, weather strip I mentioned this in my material list vid and this is a weather strip seal, weather strip seal, not AC seal or anything like that, is the duck brand weather strip seal. This is exactly what I've been using for the past three or four years, and it's holding up great. Uh, this, this styrofoam has been stabbed by a hook thousands of times, and it's, it's still holding up. This this box is still good. It's just that I want to reconfigure it to where I don't have to have those plastic bags in here. And the box looks a lot nicer. As you can see here, I don't have that. Usually I got a layer of plastic bags down here with extra jigs in it that I didn't have room for in this box. So that's what the reason why I'm making a, a new box. This box still performs great. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, so let's get started on uh, what we got to do get the stuff get the styrofoam cut there's a little tip the little, little secret that you got to do with that styrofoam to make it work and then we have to do some do some scuffing on the on the box where we're gonna going to uh put the styrofoam glue it in okay so what we're gonna do is measure off eight pieces i got a little piece of uh uh, old roll that I made my current box out of so I'm going to use the balance of it before I use my, my new roll and 13 and a half inches is what worked well on my other box so measure out 13 and a half inches 13 and a half inches okay now this this has a a glue on it already it's d don't depend on that <laughs> do not depend on that glue it, it will not work but it has a glue on it already but uh it's not strong enough to hold uh within that box and and hold jigs and let's just double check 
before we cut them all it's going to be perfect 13 and a half inches is perfect so we'll cut eight more of those or seven more do one more and uh, we'll be back okay so that's two for me got six more to go okay guys one thing that I have forgot this glue is really no good but if you allow two of these pieces to, to touch one another they stick really well it's not good enough to uh, to to hold jigs but it will hold against each other so as you can see here I'm, I'm just flecking it trying to get that bow out of it so it'll lay flat and you got to do them all like that the, the, the tighter wraps on the roll you got to do a little more I damaged a couple pieces I think it'll be alright uh, and one other thing too is if you're gonna do eight if you're gonna do eight rows like I'm gonna try to make happen on this bill you're gonna need more than one roll of this uh, weather strip uh, so like I said I'm on I'm, I'm uh, modifying this pretty much live uh, you would have had enough to do it with the seven rolls. I remember only buying one roll of this stuff. Uh, so, but it's like I say, you can see me flexing it, bending it the opposite way that that, that is trying to stay. I just want to stay like that. So just bend it the opposite way to try to make it lay flat. All right. So what we're gonna do? is uh, take our Gorilla Glue and on the sticky side you got to be careful with this stuff it don't it won't hold your jigs but it's fair it'll stick to your fingers pretty good so you gotta be careful and I've been trying to not touch the sticky part the sticky side because it sticks to your fingers pretty good so we're gonna take our glue and uh, coat this side pretty daggone good. You want to cover the complete side. So put a, a line on. I'll just use some of the tape or the paper that was stuck to it and coat the entire surface of the sticky side make sure it's a sticky side you don't want your jig sticking your feathers or anything sticking to this little glue that they got on here but it's not strong enough to hold in the jig box so we want to coat the entire surface don't ask me how I know this is what you have to do okay because my first round of this box didn't work out very well. I mean it worked but it didn't last. So I, I kept using the same styrofoam and what I found was after the glue that you put on here to put on the box after it stuck to the back of the uh, styrofoam the styrofoam would adhere, adhere to the box a lot better so that's why I'm putting a, a, a coating of Gorilla Glue and we're gonna let this sit overnight until it dries and that's why I was saying that we, we wasn't gonna be able to uh, do much more and I'm just using a piece of paper that was on the original paper that was on uh, styrofoam to coat the entire sticky side of the styrofoam okay and then we're going to allow this to dry 
and don't be you know don't skimp it you put a nice coat on there we'll probably use about that whole bottle of glue gluing it into the box okay so we'll get all of these done these will sit overnight hey guys uh, I'm gonna mention this again try not to this little little glue that's on here I mean it's it's fairly sticky but it's not good enough to hold your jigs like I said a while ago but work work use it I mean handle it from the sides and that's what I'm finding right now to uh, be working the best all right guys we're back uh, our glue is totally dry uh, however we're gonna move these out of the way you still don't want to let these touch uh, any little heat will make that glue uh, adhere to, to each other so be sure to have all of the glue sides facing up we're gonna set these out of the way I'm gonna show you a drawing with some measurements in a little bit of how I'm gonna do my box now this is just how I'm gonna do this box my box uh, if you have tails on your jigs longer than an inch maybe an inch and a quarter you may want to have a bigger space in between the styrofoam but this is this this box has worked great for me and as like I say my tail I don't have tails two inches long anything like that all right let's make this clear this is the latch these are the latches this is the hinge okay I'm gonna show you a drawing of the bottom with the hinge with the hinges uh, label and I'm going to show you a picture of the lid with the hinges labeled. Okay, on the bottom of the box, we're going to measure from the hinge side back on all of the, the, the uh, styrofoam. All the measurements are going to be from the hinge side for this styrofoam, this styrofoam, this styrofoam. We're going to put four in here. And the measurement is for the front of the styrofoam is going to be from this side. Okay. However, on the lid, the measurement's going to come from the latch side. And I have the hinge labeled at the bottom of the, of the lid. Okay? So all of the measurements for the styrofoam that goes on the lid would be from the latch side. Okay? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you a picture of this. I'm going to take a picture of it. I'll take a picture and make it look a lot better and uh, put this in the video so that you'll you'll be able to see this uh, but what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mark where the start of the styrofoam goes and what we're gonna have to do is all the way across in every area that the the styrofoam is gonna go we're going to have to, to scuff it up with, I'm talking about pretty daggone good. I'll do one on camera and uh, show you how scuffed up I got. I'm not saying get a piece of sandpaper. I'm saying you're going to need to use a, a knife. Uh, I got a knife here, a little knife. We're going to put some pretty good gouges in this uh, in this plastic and that that gives that glue because right now, I'm gonna tell you this is this plastic is tough to get something to stick to very tough so I'm gonna measure off all of, all of the places that and you'll have the measurements I'm gonna measure off everywhere where the styrofoam goes and mark it with the a mark or sharpie and then I'm gonna scuff it up as y'all can see all I did was take took a tape measure and my sharpie and uh, measured off those measurements that's on the drawing and the foam is three quarters of an inch so three quarters of an inch from the mark we're gonna put another mark And then that one, I just used that line at the back of the box. I don't have a ruler, but I got a piece of cardboard. And uh, I'm not at home, so I'm at my apartment up here. But I, don't, I don't have 
access to a lot of the things that I would, would if I was at home. So I'm just making do. So uh, just putting lines to, to guide me on where I need to scuff the box up. Don't have to be perfect. Uh, it's going to be pretty good. It's going to look pretty good once we get through. It's like as like I was saying a while ago, you don't you don't have to. I mean, you can you can measure this out to to fit what you're going to put in there. But you can configure it any way you want. But the process is what you need to know. Uh, and uh, the two most important things that you need to take off of this video is one: put the the Gorilla Glue on the back side of the foam allow it to dry and two is scuff up where you're going to lay out your your foam that foam uh i hadn't tried any other foam i just i don't know that foam feels good uh it has uh, i've poked and changed out jigs on that foam i mean thousands of times and uh that foam still holds it so i mean it's it's a good foam i mean i like I said earlier, there's a guy that mentioned that he has some AC foam or something like that. If you want to try it, hey, this is all, I come up with this by testing. So the AC foam could be something that, that works even better. Uh, but I had a couple guys and, and I thought about this and I hate it that I told them just use what you want, the box that you want. I was looking at my box and when you put the foam on here, and you're putting jigs on the top, when you close this box, those jigs meet. And uh, this box stays in my truck, okay? I drive about 10 hours a week. Uh, back, and, you know, I drive up here to Fort Worth to work during the week, and then I drive back home for the weekend. And you can only imagine the vibration that this box goes through and those jigs still hold. So the process that I'm using is proven to me. It, it works great. Uh, I'd recommend this for, to, to anybody. And uh, we're almost there, guys. All I have to do is, like I say, I got a knife. Got a little knife here. Got a box cutter. Uh, probably use a file. I'm just gonna scuff it up the best that I can. Uh, and there's no technique, but it's like I say, you want this scuffed up very, very good. Uh, there's really nothing special that I'm going to tell you that I'm doing other than just digging into it. Uh, you don't want to cut through the box. <laughs> you don't want to do that. But I'm, what I am going to do is put lines in the box this way, and I'm going to come back and put a scar coming down within those lines. Uh, if you go outside the line, it's not going to really hurt anything uh, because the amount of glue we're going to put on this for the foam, it's going to going to seal that scar back up anyway. So I mean, just take your time, put several scars on it. You want it rough, and you want to dig in it pretty good. So I'm just using this little knife now. And I'm gonna use anything that I can to, to make this this thing rough. Uh, I got a file here too. I didn't use this on the last ball. I was thinking earlier. I just got a my toaster and went off. I put some heads in there. Got some painted heads in there. So this file, maybe it's just a triangular file. Can't really control it too good, but I'm scuffing it up as you can see, pretty good. Just use whatever you have, uh, any kind of sharp object. Uh, I would say that a razor blade would work, uh, but you want you want something pretty thick. As like I say, the better you scuff it up, the better it's going to hold. And I was looking looking at my box a while ago. I was like, man, I did I scuffed that thing up pretty daggone good. And it's like I was saying, that box, I mean, I can feel that, and it's it's rough, super rough. Uh, hold it up so you can take a good look at that. 
scored pretty daggone good. All right, guys. Uh, well, I'm away. I've uh, scuffed up the bottom. I want you guys to take a close look at that. You want that scraped up pretty good. You want it scarred very good. Uh, what I found is the file is doing a pretty daggone good job. This is just a little triangular file, rat tail file, and I'm using one of the points down here, the corners, also using a knife, and using a box cutter. Be careful with this, be careful with this, because it will cut through. Uh, I've been sort of leaning it a little bit to the side while I cut, so be very careful when you're using your razor. Uh, you do not want to cut all the way through the box. It's very important that you don't do that. So let's get get your scuffed up. Get it scuffed up. I'm gonna finish scuffing this one up. It's like I say, get it very good, guys. I don't know if this camera will show it better, but that is scuffed very very good. Not cut through, but it's it's scarred very good. That's gonna give that glue something to uh, hold on to. Another thing too. Down on the sides, on the sides, scar it up also. I'm not sure if that camera will pick that up. But you can sort of see it on the side because we're going to be putting glue on the sides of this also. All right, y'all. Hey, let me tell you, that's a, uh, that's a workout. Uh, if you possibly have a Dremel, I got one at home, but I don't have it up, up here in, where I'm at work. But uh, got the lid, lid scuffed up, lid scuffed up pretty good, and the base is scuffed up. So now all we have to do is get the, the, the loose particles out, get the loose particles out, and now one thing I want you to understand is these are cut a tad bit long okay and the reason why I cut them long is because they shrink for some reason and uh, what I found is is it works better it, be sure to cut these at 13 and a half inches if you get the 3700 that box that, that we discussed in the other video if you get that box cut these strips these strips at 13 and a half inches long okay very important and uh, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and place these in here to get a good look at what it's gonna look like so like I say it's a, they're a tad bit long but they they shrink okay It's looking like it's going to work out pretty good. So the next step is going to be gluing it in. So we'll move that one out of the way. We're going to put the, the glue, the, the side we put the, uh, the Gorilla Glue on, that's the side that's going to go down. Okay. Now you want to put a good amount of this glue down here that's why I suggested buying the big bottle of glue and some up on the sides looking good looking good put some up on the side and I just put a, a good bead right down the middle. And if, if you do that, you'll see it. It's going to come out of the sides, and that's what you want. You, it's going to. It's going to. It's not all going to stay up under your phone, and that's what you want. Okay, we're going to do the rest of these, and. Uh, well, see if I can't find something to lay on the top of it 
nothing heavy. A magazine. Let's see if I, I don't think I have a magazine here, but you want something to give it just a little pressure. That way it don't raise up. Get that glue time to set and and hold. So I'm gonna get the rest of these in. See if I can't find a box or or a magazine or something to apply just light pressure. You don't want to set anything heavy on it. Somebody's going to end up with this particular box here. I'm not sure whoever wins. Whoever watched that video and uh, commented. it. I talked about doing the, uh, give, the box giveaway with me and Bluegill was up there talking. And I did flash that you had to comment and put a plus symbol in your comment. All right, guys. We gave uh, the glue on the lid time to dry. Uh, another tip that uh, I've seen that works helps a lot is uh, put some support up under your uh, lid. That way, your glue won't drain down because the the, the lid will be on a, at a slant if uh, you don't put some up under it. So. Again, yeah, I used the box, the glue bottle, and the piece of cardboard, and the uh, utility knife to uh, add pressure. And there we have it. Completed box. And even though I scuffed it up super good, you can't you can't see any of the scratches because the glue the glue filled in the scratches which will help it in the uh, adhesion department oh another thing too that uh, you'll need to do is on the lid these corners just trim them off a little bit because if not these little top pieces will, uh, these little corner pieces will get caught in that, uh, that little, uh, ceiling area right there. <laughs>